Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at three worked examples showing you how to do problems involving Coulomb's inverse square law. Now, if you haven't done so already, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that two point charges A and B are separated by a distance of 0.2 metres. If the charge on A is plus 2 microcoulombs and the charge on B is minus 1 microcoulombs, calculate the force each charge exerts on the other. Well, remember the force for Coulomb's inverse square law is a mutual force, which means that the force that A exerts on B will be the same in magnitude as the force that B exerts on A, but just in the opposite direction. So we can simply just use the relationship for Coulomb's inverse square law to find the force. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F. We know the charge Q1 is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. That's writing out the 2 microcoulomb charge in full. The charge Q2 is minus 1 microcoulombs, which is the same as minus 1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Constant epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space, is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per metre. And R, the distance between the two charges, is 0.2 metres. So writing down our equation, we have F equals Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. And substituting in the numbers gives us 2 times 10 to the minus 6 times minus 1 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times 0.2 squared. Plugging all of this into your calculator should give you a final answer of minus 0.45 newtons. And lastly, note that the negative sign indicates an attractive force, because we've got a positive charge here and a negative charge here, so they should want to attract each other. Question 2 says that two minus 10 microcoulomb charges are each placed 0.12 metres away from a plus 5 microcoulomb charge as shown below. Calculate the magnitude of the downward force acting on the plus 5 microcoulomb charge. So we want to find the magnitude of the force that's going to be acting downwards on this plus 5 microcoulomb charge. But it's not going to be as easy as just using Coulomb's inverse square law because we've got more than two charges here. We've got three charges in total. Notice that we've got two identical charges of minus 10 microcoulombs and these are placed at an angle of 30 degrees away from the vertical and are also a distance of 0.12 metres away from the plus 5 microcoulomb charge. What we need to do first here is to find the force on the plus 5 microcoulomb charge due to the minus 10 microcoulomb charge. And it's just the magnitude that we want. So because these two charges are the same, we're just going to find the force due to one of them. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find F. We know that Q1 is 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Q2 is minus 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Again, expanding the prefix of microcoulombs into minus 6. Epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per metre from the data sheet, and the distance between them is 0.12 metres. So writing down our equation, we have F equals Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 5 times 10 to the minus 6 times minus 10 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times 0.12 squared. Putting all of this into your calculator should give you an answer of minus 31.2 newtons. But remember we said we're interested in the magnitude only, so we're going to ignore the negative sign. It should also be noted here that the horizontal components of the force on the plus 5 microcoulomb charge cancel each other out. So looking back at the diagram, any horizontal components of the force due to the minus 10 microcoulomb charges cancel each other out. Remember we want to find the magnitude of the downward force, so if we consider the triangle below, if this is our plus 5 microcoulomb charge, and this is our minus 10 microcoulomb charge, we can draw on the vector now between the two, which has a magnitude of 31.2 newtons, which we've just found. And then if we sketch the downward force vector, we could label this FD. And then just labeling some more parts of our triangle, we know the angle in here is 30 degrees from our diagram in the question. We can then complete this triangle here and add in a right angle. And then we can calculate the downward force using Sokotoa. So if we know the angle in here, the adjacent side is what we're trying to find, and we know the hypotenuse is 31.2 newtons. So to find the magnitude of the downward force here, we can use cos 30 equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which gives us cos 30 equals Fd over 31.2, and if we rearrange that, we get Fd equals 31.2 cos 30. Then what I'm going to do is, because this is only due to 1 minus 10 microcoulomb charge, we can actually multiply this answer by 2, because we're going to have the exact same effect from the other minus 10 microcoulomb charge. So multiplying this by 2, since there are 2 minus 10 microcoulomb charges, so putting this into your calculator, you get 27.0 for this part, and then multiplying that by 2 gives a final answer of 54 newtons. Lastly, question 3 says that three identical charges A, B and C are fixed at the positions shown in the right angle triangle below. 
Each charge is plus 8 nanocoulombs, i.e. plus 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs in magnitude. So you'll notice that charge B is a distance of 0.6 metres from charge A, and charge C is a distance of 0.8 metres from charge A. And B and C are separated by 0.1 metres. And these all have the same charge. Part A says to calculate the forces exerted on charge A by charges B and C. So we need to do two separate calculations here using Coulomb's inverse square law. So let's first find the force on charge A due to charge B, and we'll call this FBA. We know that Q1 is 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, the power of minus 9 there being for nano. Q2 is 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, the same charge. Epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And lastly, the distance between the charges A and B from the diagram earlier was 0.6 meters. Writing down our equation, we have FBA equals Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 8 times 10 to the minus 9 times 8 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times 0.6 squared. Putting this into your calculator should then give you an answer of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons along BA. Remember that force is a vector, so we need a direction, and this means we have repulsion because charge A is going to be repelled away from charge B. So if we go back to the diagram here, along BA means that the charge A is going to move this way along that direction of BA. Doing the same for the force on charge A due to charge C now, let's call the force FCA, and Q1 is 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, and Q2 is 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs as before. Epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And lastly, the distance R this time is 0.8 meters between charges A and C from the diagram. So writing down our equation, we have FCA equals Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 8 times 10 to the minus 9 times 8 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times 0.8 squared. And if you plug all that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 0.9 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons along CA. And again, this is going to be repulsion. So looking back at the diagram, along the direction of CA means that A is going to be pushed out this way away from charge C. Part B says to calculate the resultant force on charge A. Remember, this means magnitude and direction. Let's start by drawing the force vectors on charge A that we've just worked out from part A. So if this is our charge A, then we've got a force FBA there, and we've got our force FCA there. And we should be able to see that these are at a right angle to each other. What we need to do with these vectors though to find the resultant is to add the vectors nose to tail. So doing that, I'm going to take this vector FCA and add it on to the end of FBA. So doing that, we have FBA, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus six newtons from part A, and FCA there, which is 0.9 times 10 to the minus six newtons, adding the tail of FCA onto the nose of FBA. And then we can draw in our resultant vector, which we'll call FR, and we can also label our right angle there. And our angle theta is going to be between the resultant vector and the starting point, so that is going to be this angle in here. So now what we need to do is find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force FR. Remember this was done at nat 5 and higher level. To find the magnitude, first of all, we use Pythagoras, so we have FR squared equals FBA squared plus FCA squared, which is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 squared plus 0.9 times 10 to the minus 6 squared, which equals 3.37 times 10 to the minus 12. And then to find FR, we need to take the square root, so we get FR equals the square root of 3.37 times 10 to the minus 12, which equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons once you put that into your calculator. So we now have our magnitude, but we need to find the direction. So to find the direction, remember we used tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which in this case is going to be FCA divided by FBA, which equals 0.9 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6, which equals 0.563. And then to find theta on its own, we need to take the inverse of tan or shift tan in your calculator of 0.563, which equals 29 degrees. And lastly, we can combine our magnitude and direction in a final statement, which says the resultant force equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons at 29 degrees north of BA. So if that's vector BA there and that angle is 29 degrees, then we can say that that's 29 degrees north of BA. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.